Hey, this is Quartz Composer tutorial number nine, and it's basically just, uh, we won't even open Quartz Composer, it's just about um, plugins. So uh, the first place you could look for plugins is Kiname. Uh, there's, there are forums on this website, and um, also I'd probably recommend that you, you uh, join the Apple Quartz Composer developer uh, mailing list, but um, this is another resource, and uh, they have actual products, uh, software products that relate to Quartz Composer, and there are plugins that are available here. Uh, for example, ArtNet tools, network tools. Um, some of them replace the things that are already in Quartz Composer and are better versions of them, and then others are um, just totally new features. So uh, they have a particular, you have to look at the installation guide, they have a particular way of installing some of their patches, their, their plugins, um, because there's a difference between custom patches and plugins. But uh, anywhere you're going to download plugins will have instructions, and it's important that you just follow them. You'll see that most of them follow the same process, but uh, sometimes there's a little bit of difference. The next thing is, um, for my students, this is particularly uh, something that you, you should download right away. This is called the uh, Lua plugin. So in Quartz Composer, one of the plugins, uh, one of the patches that exist is a JavaScript patch. So at some point, you can decide that the uh, noodles and uh, patches are too frustrating. The logic that you want to implement has too many uh, spaghetti lines and uh, meatballs. So um, so instead, you could resort to uh, code. And, and uh, the JavaScript patch allows you to do that, but it's not completely stable and can crash Quartz Composer, and it's, it's um, not ideal. So Lua is a different programming language that is a, it's a scripting language. And it's um, right from the beginning, it was designed to do things like this, to act as a scripting language for a piece of software, where JavaScript has um, isn't, isn't necessarily the same. So in any case, it, it, it's definitely worth downloading. You can download all these plugins, and um, you can decide to use them or not. They just show up as extra patches in the patch library. So I just searched for uh, Boink's um, Quartz Composer Lua plugin, and here is the link. It says you can download the patch from our website. You click that, and what it does is it, it gets a, um, a zip file from their site, which is how most of these work, and then it tells you right here how to install it. Once you unzip that uh, zip file, you'll get a .plugin file, and you put it in uh, tilde, which is your home directory, uh, library graphics Quartz Composer plugins. Quartz Composer plugins has spaces there, and uh, the, the capitalization matters. And I say that because it's possible that these folders don't actually exist on your computer, so you just have to create them. Um, if you put it in your home directory in this path, it'll be available to you. If you have other people that use the computer, uh, you might want to put it in uh, slash library, which means the root of your hard drive. There's a library folder, and it looks the same, but it's just not based off of your home folder. Then anyone who uses Quartz Composer on that computer will have access to the plugin that you're installing. Sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it's not what you want. So um, just to show you in the Finder, this is how you get to um, the uh, the library folder. If I go into my home folder, there isn't a uh, library folder here, and that's because Apple doesn't trust you with it. If you go to the Go menu, you see that it's not here either until you press the Option key. Now it appears. So you can go to Library, and from here you can find uh, the Graphics folder, and then inside there, there should be uh, maybe a Quartz Composer plugins folder. And you can see there's also a Quartz Composer patches folder, which is different. Uh, this is this is where they're asking you to put the file. And if you look, I have some plugins. In fact, there's the one for, for the Lua plugin. So that's how you generally install plugins. But like I said, check the, check the instructions for everything you download. Um, RDQC Utils. My name's Rob Duart. So that's Rob Duart Quartz Composer Utils. And this is just, uh, there are a few handy things in here, calculating the distance between uh, two XY coordinates. Um, so you could download things like this and have access to them. And you see that I have the same instructions for installing it. So um, it seems like all of a sudden Quartz Composers has, has this uh, has this revival, and um, sometimes it seems like it disappears, and, and there's rumors that Apple isn't interested in it anymore, and uh, then all of a sudden it come, becomes popular again. And so that's kind of what's happened here. I think it's become really popular with uh, with interaction designers and interface designers, particularly with mobile devices, because you can kind of prototype a, an interface really easily. 
And so there is this actually, if you go to qcdesigners.com, which is pretty new, and you click on uh, this link, JQC is a whole plugin. Uh, it's kind of a framework, but I think it shows up as uh, new patches that you have access to. Um, and basically they are, you know, this may or may not be good for you. I think probably this is ideal if you're interested in prototyping UIs, but some of these patches may um, be counter uh, productive if you're interested in maybe like just the kinds of things that we've been doing motion graphics on screen only because they have uh, this kind of motivation to bring pixels into everything where Quartz Composer likes to use units so and it only occasionally uses pixels but for um, mocking up an interface for a phone you probably are really interested in having everything be based on pixels so most of these things that they add uh, are pixel based but there is um, actually this is a, a, a patch that I have in my um, plugin which is uh, to just swap these two things so some of these are pretty handy uh, in a basic way. The reason why people are all excited about it is because uh, the Facebook people started using Quartz Composer to mock up their uh, iPhone um, app, I think. So uh, origami.facebook.com is actually more than just plugins. It adds um, a, men a different menu to the top of Quartz Composer. It allows you to have, uh, for example, squ uh, straight noodles instead of noodly noodles, which some people might like, I don't like but um, it shows you all these new things that are included and it actually changes the behavior of Quartz Composer a little bit in addition to adding new patches to the patch library. So um, again, if you're interested in mocking up interfaces with Quartz Composer, I would install this, but if you're not, then it can become weird. Um, for example, I installed this and then I just dragged an image onto the Quartz Composer uh, editor and I expect it to just show an image, but it actually adds an image and a layer, which this layer is a new kind of idea that is specifically related to origami. So um, you, I'd say it's worth a try, but you might have to uninstall it like I did if, um, if you're not specifically interested in um, mocking up user interfaces. So that's about it. Uh, there are lots of other plugins. Um, anything that you find for any other programming language, maybe, um, you know, uh, computer vision or um, doing sophisticated things with, um, uh, you know, DMX lighting or any, anything like that, you will find uh, a, probably a plugin for, and you can install it and it'll just show up as new patches in the patch library.